Jumbo Karibu Tena to this organic strawberry farm. This is your farm in Jiroge and I hope you're learning something and welcome to our strawberry farm. We are located along Wayakiwe, a place called Odero Corporation. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to manage your pests and diseases organically. Kwayo Machache, let's do this. The first pest and disease is what we call a leaf spots. Now leaf spots is caused by three ways. Number one, through overhead irrigation, because when water gets in contact with your leaves, you're definitely going to get leaf spots. It can also be caused because of rainfall. And it can also be caused at extreme scenarios, it's caused because of red spider mites. But you'll find red spider mites for farmers who are growing strawberries inside a greenhouse. This, I'm doing an open field system, is because of the rain. So, how do we prevent and manage this thing? So if you're doing irrigation using overhead irrigation, I'll tell you this, stop doing overhead irrigation and either adapt either to drip irrigation or do it manually. In case you have this caused because of the rain, all you have to do is just prune off the leaves and throw them away. In case you're in a greenhouse and you've actually been faced because of red spider mites and of course the leaf spots, you need to use a biological control. Now remember this, there's organic, there's synthetic, and there's biological. Let me just explain briefly what biological is. Biological is using one pest feeding on another pest, or one animal feeding on another animal. Think about the ladybird. A ladybird will feed on aphids. That is biological. So there's a biological control from Coopert, Kenya, that is called Spidex. So the Spidex is what you're going to come and apply on your leaves and it's actually live organisms that's actually going to feed on your red spider mites. We have tested this in different farms. One farm is in Kabarak, another farm is in uh, Nanyuki, and the results we have actually seen after two weeks, all your spider mites are actually dead because the spidex actually works. And see, the good thing about it, you could hear what you're saying. You can also link you up with these farmers. You'll talk to them, hear it from the horse's mouth itself. But with the spidex and the leaf spots, that is a done deal. The second pest and disease is actually going to affect your fruits. There's what we call anthracnos and botrytis. So your fruit will look like this. I know you're probably wondering, ew, looks very bad. Yes, it looks very bad. It's a good fruit. The fruit started off very well, but because of anthracnos, this actually happens. So. For you to avoid anthracnose, now remember anthracnose is more like a fungal disease. So, and because once, once the fruit gets in touch with water, you're actually going to get such kind of a challenge. So, you're probably wondering, somebody who's inside a greenhouse, they'll be smiling all the way to the bank. Yes, they will. But what about the outside farmer? It's still okay. What I'd encourage you to do, get your greenhouse paper. You see what I've done, the low tunneling system? I'm going to come and take my greenhouse paper and cover on top of my beds. This way, if it's raining, my fruits are not going to get in touch with water. So anthracnose and botrytis is avoided, okay? And it's something I would encourage you and every other farmer, please, in case that happens to you, do not be alarmed, okay? Because it actually works. The third pest and disease is from slugs. Yes, there's a difference between slugs and snails. I know you probably thought it's one of the same thing, but it's not. So for slugs, what they do, they actually come and end up eating the entire fruit or eating a portion of the fruit. That becomes a waste. So what we are doing so far, we're doing a research with the sipe to actually try to understand what really causes the slug to come and eat the strawberry fruit. What really attracts the strawberry, what attracts the slug to this strawberry fruit? It is something that really puzzles quite a number of farmers. But yes, we have tried our own concussions that, well, it works, but you want to get a definitive results that you're going to get from Isipe. So again, we'll definitely keep you updated on that. 
and even if you follow us on Facebook or our Facebook page, but also in the description and even the comments, we'll definitely ensure that we tell you the results that we found from Isipe. Slugs is one thing that you actually want to avoid in your strawberry plantation. Open field farmer, I know you're probably wondering, what about the birds? Yes, birds are a blessing, but they may not be a blessing to you so much once they start eating your fruit. So, how do you get rid of birds? Now, the first thing, do not kill birds. Again, I repeat, do not kill the birds. So what you need to do, you need to prevent them from eating your strawberries. So how we do it, we are going to use netting. So you can use one, a bird net. You can use a shed net. If you're going to use a shed net, ensure your shed net is 35%. Go to the shop and tell them, I want shed net that is 35%. Third one, you can also use a fishing net. Fish net also, you can also use the fishing net, but now you also have to look at it in terms of the cost also, okay? If not, you can also decide to use galvanized chicken mesh, okay? It actually work. And remember, the key word is galvanized chicken mesh. Why say galvanized? Because let's say it rains and elements, you do not want that rust to actually fall on your beds or even on your plants or even on your fruits, okay? But once you've covered, the, the strawberry plants with a different kind of netting, you have actually prevented birds from coming to eat your fruits. Birds are notorious, but remember, they're also hungry at the same time. So also for you, you need to be very careful and be careful in terms of, don't let just birds just come and eat the hard labor that you've done, okay? Prevent them by using the netting system. Remember, you can either do it overhead or you can try to use it, the low tunneling system. The choice is yours, but personally for us, the strawberry farm, we always choose to do the low tunneling system because of cash money wise. It saves us a lot of money. In our next topic, we are going to learn about costing. You know, you're probably wondering, so how much does this cost? How much will it entail for me to actually set up my own strawberry farm? How much am I going to get? The mathematics is in our next episode. Before that, make sure you like, share and hit that subscribe button because trust you me i hope you're learning something new see you in our next episode